morning, everyone. Welcome to the weekly call. Morning. If you are in a safe situation, please turn your cameras on so we can make this an interactive experience. And uh, today we're going to be practicing some cold call scenarios, having conversations with people. That's all it really is. No need to overthink it. Wait a few more seconds for everyone else to join in. Uh, while we're waiting for everybody, everyone to join in, are there any questions about anything in general, about the SkillBridge program, about transitioning out of the military, about getting licensed, test prep, anything like that? While people are thinking of that question, I just want to congratulate Stephen Hendricks. He'll be our newest member at EXP. Stephen Hendricks, are you in the group? Yeah. So he hasn't joined yet. Luis Alban, I didn't get a chance to congratulate you as well. Um, any uh, words of advice you have for your peers in the program for passing the test as well as, because you're getting licensed in Florida, right? Yeah, I'm licensed in Florida. Any uh, words uh, of wisdom for that process as well? Uh, yeah, so for me specifically, I just went ahead and uh, as soon as I signed up for the pre-licensing course, I went ahead and started the application for through the DBPR uh, here in Florida. So it gave me a head start. You know, I didn't have to wait. Just waited. It took about three weeks to get approved, you know, with fingerprints and background check. <clears throat> but you know, I was working on the course. And so it took me about a month, well, two months total. And then after I completed the the course, I started studying specifically for the Florida test. So for anybody who's in Florida, um, I would study material that is directly related to the state because uh, if you're studying um, just national content, it's going to be too broad, you know. Florida is a little more specific to certain rules and, you know, but uh, yeah, what helped me the most, I was just kept doing practice tests and every day until I felt confident, you know, scoring 90% and above consistently. And when I went and took the test, I breezed through it pretty quickly. You know, it took me about an hour to complete. And I don't know the score, they didn't tell me, but you know, I felt like I got pretty high, so. Well, yeah, I mean, if anybody has any questions, they could DM me or whatever. But yeah, that was my, pro my process. Thanks, Luis. And which uh, practice test uh, platform <clears throat> you signed up for? I started through Prep Agent, but like I said, they were a little bit too broad. So I went through, for Florida, there's a more specific school called uh, Magnolia. School of Real Estate. So they're specifically for Florida tests. But even they do cover national portion too. It helped me understand every, every uh, concept of real estate better, just watching their videos on YouTube. And, but I purchased a uh, cram course, which helped me a lot. All right. Thank you. And Magnolia, that was. That was your uh, licensing course, or was that just the practice test platform? That was just the uh, practice test. Yeah, they have oh. pretty good uh, practice tests. Okay. For Florida. Cool. Yeah. If you don't mind, when you get a chance, if you please drop a link for that in the Florida State group, in the channel, in uh, Slack, so other Florida folks can see that and benefit from that tool. All right. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna be going through three different scenarios, doing some, you know, practice doing scripts, 
and uh, they're going to kind of build on each other. We're going to start off with just practice of a of the Ford conversation. So uh, when I was first getting into the business, one of my buddies that was in real in real estate for a couple of years, he, one of the things that he recommended to get started was going through your phone book, like in your contacts in your phone, A through Z. He's calling every contact. Um, some of those people, it's going to be like some random person that you uh, had a you know military exercise with and you just happen to save their phone number. Um, but that's going to give you a little practice of what it's like to call some random stranger and ask them if they want to buy or sell a house. Um, and, you know, worst, worst case, the person is just like, why are you calling me? Don't ever call me again. And you probably weren't ever going to talk to that person again anyways. Um, best case, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm actually, it's funny you called me. I'm actually thinking about buying a place. And they may not be anywhere near you. They, you know, they might be on the opposite side of the country, but you could always refer them. Or you could, uh, you, they might have a friend that's moving to your area. You never know what's going to happen, but um, you definitely will not know if you never make that contact. Uh, so we're going to get some practice here. No pressure because we're all just in the same thing. You know, we're not um, actually calling strangers. We're calling, we're going to be simulating talking with our fellow uh, or our friends, but interns that are just in the same thing. So there's no, no, no pressure on the situation. Any questions before we kick off this practice? All right. So I'm going to split us up into groups of about four. We have 33 people in the group right now. So that's 33 by 10, these seven groups. And so again, um, you're just simulating one, one person in the group is going to be the, the agent or agent in training, calling their friend or just random contact in their phone. Hey, how's it going? And then going through the, you can use the Ford, conversa the Ford model as, as a way to flow your conversation. If you have some other just regular conversation technique that you use, you can use that, but just you know, get in the habit of being able to make conversation with a complete stranger. All righty. Splitting us up into breakout rooms. And it's going to be uh, seven minutes. So th about three minutes for the first person to go. And then you can do a quick little debrief and then flip flop uh, to other people have the conversation. All right. Harry Kimball, Chris Barth, Ryan Fed. William Maddox, John Mack, Portia, What's up, buddy? All right. So how'd it go? Good. Good talking to an old Ben, I can, I can, ben, I can, you can hit me up later if you'd like. Okay. <clears throat> Star, who is that? Was that Chuck Blades? No, I, I was talking to uh, uh, Benjamin Romero. He actually had some questions regarding how to essentially kind of initiate uh, kind of a cold call. And I was just giving him some advice based off of my experience from recruiting duty and, you know, making cold calls and making home visits. And, um, and basically uh, one of the things you want to do is establish rapport, try to find some common ground with them in one way, shape or another. Um, and just within a few minutes of talking to him, I found something he liked and we could, we could easily have carried off that conversation for another hour. 
um, you know, then building trust and rapport with him that can later move into, you know, something along sales. And again, I'm new to real, real estate, but I was just trying to help him with how to build and establish rapport with individuals to initiate a conversation. So what were some technique, techniques they used? What were the questions um, that you asked? Well, what I, what I, I, the example I gave, um, or the scenario I started off with was I, you know, I asked him, Hey, where you live right now? I said, he's in Oceanside. I was like, Oh, great. You know, I lived in Oceanside at one time. We've got some family members that live in California. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite restaurants in Oceanside or in that area is stone brewery. I, I love, I love that place. And, uh, he, had, you know, I asked him if he'd been there. He said, yes, he's actually been there. That's my end. You found something you have you, that you have common ground in. You expand upon that, and then you can kind of put your put plugs in here and there that, uh, you know, the next question I could have asked is, well, what do you do for a living? He could ask me what I do for a living, and then I could start going into that conversation. So kind of a quick rundown, but I was just trying to help him out a little bit there. Yeah, that's great. And it's it could be, yeah, like, like you said, it's something as simple as, you know, a restaurant that you guys have both been to. And yeah. you know, they start talking about the menu or whatever, and then um, it brings up other pieces of other topics that you can talk about. And just and, find find some sort of niche, some in dogs, pets, phones, technology, anything. It doesn't. It, it could be the clothing that they're wearing. Um, anything you can find some sort of niche, and if you can find a common ground that, that you have with them, absolutely, you can open up a, a weird, uh, large myriad of conversations. Yeah, definitely. Um, anybody else got some lessons learned to contribute to the group? Anyone just completely lost when they were they had that conversation? They just didn't know what to say at all. Uh, can I can I kind of talk on? Uh, I think Shyla Kippart Kippart. Uh, Kip, I, I don't. I'm sorry, I'm messing up your name on her question. His or her question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so in the chat is, do you have any advice? Day before the test, uh, they're taking the test in a week. So, hi, Shyla. Um, <laughs> so, uh, along with what Luis was saying earlier. Uh, study for your state, of course. But what I found really helpful for me when I took my test was um, studying, the, understanding the theories and the principles, not so much taking the practice test and learning those answers, if that makes sense. Uh, I focused a lot on, I focused a lot on that. And then when I went and took my test, it, it, I, I was mind blown. I thought I failed. I was like, oh, well, here, I'm, I'm, I'll be back in two weeks so I can take my test again. Again, I'm in California. Uh, luckily, I passed. I don't know how. But I'd say the last three or four days, that's pretty much what I did. Uh, a good friend of mine gave me the advice, like, don't do focus on theories, understand the theories. As long as you understand the theories and the principles, whatever question they throw at you, you'll understand and you'll be able to comprehend and answer. So that's just my recommendation. Yeah, I'm pretty decent with the, the state like portion of it, which I'm taking mine in Maryland. Um, well, I'm doing an online test because Maryland offers it. Um, I just have to video chat someone while I'm doing it. But my, I'm like so close to, like I'm barely passing the national portion. And I think it's just because I keep switching up like the different terminologies and like, uh, I don't know, it just confuses me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's where it's really helpful to, you know, break out the dictionary. Those, those terms that you're talking about, look them up, look up the origin of those words because if you're just trying to just memorize it just how it is in the question you're just going to keep confusing yourself by you know guessing at what it means all right anything else any other questions people have about anything looks like there's another person in maryland so you guys could be studying together stuff like that and there's maybe some people in the group don't understand don't realize it but in uh slack there's uh, channels for each state um and so if you learn something feel free to drop it in there that other people from your state can benefit from and if you have questions about anything hop in that channel and ask other people within your state those state specific questions all right if there's nothing else we'll go ahead and roll on to the next scenario so now we'll just pretend that when you're making those phone calls uh, a through z through your contacts uh, one of your friends actually connects you with their friend who is thinking about buying when they PCS to your local area. Um, so then in this next scenario, you have somebody who um, is actually kind of deciding between renting and buying, but they, they definitely want to talk to a realtor. So they want to talk to you. Um, so one person's going to play 
the person that's PCS into your area, other person's going to play the realtor and you're just going to have a conversation with them um, and just navigate it. Just however, however it flows really. Cause you don't want to make it like force, like, Hey, I have your, got your name from my friend, Nikki. And she said, you want to buy a house? What's your price range? Where do you want to buy a house? Like make it more of a natural flow, establish that rapport, like Alex said, and then uh, try to get as much information. The key is asking questions. So uh, just do a little practice on that. All right, same thing. We'll do uh, seven minutes, three minutes, uh, one pair, and then flip-flop another three minutes and stay in the group and practice until the timer ends after that minute warning. Any questions before we kick it off? All right, opening the rooms. All right, welcome back, everyone. How did that go? Any lessons learned? Any things that worked nicely yeah. for anyone thinking on your feet and be able to like like transition from topic to topic like quickly if you need to yep yeah it's, and that's where um you know you want to have scripts and you want to practice them but you don't want to be reliant on them because if you have your script in front of you about you know convincing someone to buy instead of rent and all of a sudden the topic shifts to like stocks instead of like investing in stocks versus investing in real estate and all you have in front of you is rent versus buy and you're like um yeah i don't know what to say because we're i was just ready to talk about renting versus buying and the person doesn't care about renting they're they're either going to invest in stocks or they're going to invest in real estate and that's what they want to talk about um what, what was what were the topics that you're jumping around with andrew um so we we just talked about if uh you know, we were buying and selling, we were, we were using you as like, um, you know, like the middleman, like, oh yeah, you referred me to Marco. And, um, and, and then it was just like, you know, carrying that conversation. And then it's like, oh, I found, I just found myself at a dead end, but like, what do they say before that I can jump to, to like, keep them engaged. So, and, yeah. and I, I feel like Marco and I both like kind of hit that same wicket. And, uh, it was like, a, it was definitely a learning point for, for me, at least, I don't know about him, but it was good. Okay. Thank you. Marco, did you have anything to, to contribute? Yeah. I mean, I definitely learned um, from uh, hearing uh, Andrew um, pretty much go off the top of his head. And like you said, just not stick to the script. If he has to, you know, adjust to something that's not on paper. I mean, he, he, he didn't stumble. Like he, he was able to think on the fly and keep moving. Nice. And the, and the way to get better at that, if, if you're like right now thinking to yourself, like, well, I'm just not an on, on the fly thinker. The way to get better at that is to practice by pairing up with somebody like this and just going through it. Uh, I'm sure Alex can attest to that. He probably wasn't the, the pro recruiter when he first started out, but got better with every call. Um, all right. And I just want to touch on some of the comments that people dropped in the chat. Um Someone asked, when it comes to prospecting and making cold calls, what are the pros over or over the phone compared to door knocking and doing it face to face? Um, and then somebody responded. And I, I would say that's very accurate. Uh, Jason said you can make way more calls, cold calls in a certain amount of time than face to face. Uh, more volume with calls for sure. Yeah, if you especially if you have a dialer where you don't have to manually dial the phone numbers, you just cycle through each phone number and if you're not familiar with the dialer just just google it um the one that i use is on red x it's the vortex and it just cycles through you can call like 100 people 100 phone numbers within like 30 minutes um but a lot of times those phone numbers aren't super uh useful like it may not even be a, a phone number that's active but it is a way to get through a lot, a lot more calls faster the setback of that, though, is you're just calling a bunch of random strangers and you don't have that face-to-face. -face. Um, you know, you get spam calls all the time and you're like, I don't know that number, I'm not going to answer, or I'm going to answer it. I know they're spam and I'm just going to mess with them, um, you know, so 
just keep that in mind. That's those are some of the basic pros and cons of that. Whereas if you're in person, if, if you're door knocking, yes, there's a risk of, you know, somebody like calling the police on you or like the person that you're knocking on them being some kind of weirdo. Um, but you do have that face to face. You can read the body language. You can, you know, have, you have more things to talk about because, you know, they're, they're wearing a 49er shirt and you can start up a conversation about how 49ers, how they did in the last game they played in or whatever. Um, you have opens up more conversation topics like that. And they see you are an actual real person right in front of them instead of some potential um, AI robot they're talking to on the phone. All right. And the last scenario we're going to do before we're done for the day, um, I wanted to throw a bit of a curveball at everyone and uh, give us an opportunity to get inside the head of the person that's deciding between renting and buying. And so in this scenario, you're going to pretend you are a property manager or uh, a friend of somebody that's convincing them to rent instead of buy. And so try to think as you're talking to that to the person, think of reasons why it's better to rent instead of buy so that you can have those those thoughts in your mind and and consider like how you can overcome. So, so when someone says, oh, yeah, if, we, if you rent instead of buy, it's cheaper. So instead of buying where your mortgage is $3,000 a month, you can rent for $1,500 a month and save $1,500 from your BAH. Um, so that's just one example. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and kick out into the breakout rooms and do that for another seven minutes. Any questions before we break out? All right, see you guys in seven minutes. Welcome back, everyone. How did that session go? Or, or some of the things that you learned, some of the um, reasons you told your friend to rent. Well, yeah, I, I mean, uh, someone mentioned that if you rent, you know, you can um, have less commitment. You know, the commitment is less, you know, you can just get up and go. You know, you don't have to worry about selling again in the future. And also you can save some money as well. You know, uh, if you, just like what you mentioned initially, BH is $3,000. You spend half on rent, you keep the rest in your pocket. Then um, as far as maintenance, if something goes wrong in the apartment, you don't have to worry about it. You just pick up the phone, call somebody, they take care of it. You know? So yeah, rent has its, uh, its own advantages. But again, in the long run, as realtors, what we have to sell to the clients, the potential client, is that yes, you're gonna get those benefits on renting, but in the long run, to build wealth, you wanna buy. Because if you rent, you are just paying the mortgage for somebody else. You are paying somebody else's mortgage. But when you buy, you are paying your own mortgage. You know, So in the long run, if equity builds up, as we've seen in California in particular, at times, some folks would get like two, three hundred thousand dollars in three years. So far, so it all just depends on the timing, the timing of the market. If you jump in at the right time, in two years' time, you can clock out a big time. So you know, we just have to use all those strategies to convince someone that hey, renting is good, but buying is better. Thank you, Abdul. Yeah, there's a couple of great ones right there. Um, flexibility. A lot of times that's what I hear from people, especially out here in Oahu, and I'm sure it's similar for you guys as well. Um, over here, people say, like, oh, I want to fill out what it's like to live in town for a little bit and then explore out, see where whatever their parts of the island I want to live on. Um, and so they, they want that flexibility where they can cancel their six-month rental um, and pick up and move and not have to deal with selling it if they had purchased that property. Um, Anything else that people brought up? So some other ones I have here, um, lower upfront costs. So yes, sometimes like most of the time you only have to do that one month um, installment. 
for a security deposit. Um, maintenance and repairs, like Abdul said, something breaks, you just call the, the landlord. But at the same time, it depends on the landlord and the property manager. So um, like a way to counter that aspect is like, okay, like you have a, a leak, my toilet is leaking and I have doo-doo water pouring all over my floor. Uh, I call my property manager. Property manager's like, yeah, we'll we'll get you get to you when we can. And so you're you can go ahead and fix it yourself, and you can tr- hope that they're going to reimburse you for the money that you put towards the repairs. But they might be like, oh, well, you you chose to do it on your own, so that's your own expense. Um, and so you're you're kind of at the um, you're at the like, discretion of the discretion property man on how well they want to handle your property. Oh yeah, uh, there's one more thing I want to add, please. So, uh, I mean, again, if you are if you are not military and you don't have that zero down VA, you know what I'm saying, VA benefit of zero down, you have to come up with like 20% down, which could be a lot of money. That could be $50,000, $80,000, $100,000, depending on the cost of the property. So if you are renting, you don't have to worry about all that, all that money. You just, you know, maybe pay a deposit of one month rent, which is like what, $1,500 or less, then jump into the house. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. A um, couple other things. Um, investment diversification. So um, I build kind of mentioned it as well. Like if you're saving part of your BH, and yes, you are kind of saving uh, some of your money if you rent for less than your BH. Um, but at the same time, that other portion is going down the drain. And so that's where it's helpful to have information on your market. And so if you if you can show the person that there's a steady incline in property value of, you know, whatever percentage it is for your area for, on, for Oahu, the average island wide is four and a half percent. Um, so wherever you are, it might be higher, might be lower, but having that information, be able to communicate, Hey, yes, you will be saving however many dollars from your BAH. However, that other portion that you're losing is also losing the money that you could be earning on it had you purchased instead of uh, rented. Um, and yeah, a couple other things, lower insurance costs. Um, you don't have to deal with market fluctuations. And yeah, just overall, just the flexibility, not having, um, not, not having that sense of commitment to one particular property. But, and then like one of the other counters to that is um, when you own a property and then when you become a landlord, that opens up other opportunities for getting financing for properties. So if you own a house for two years and or own a house and then rent it out for at least two years and you have that, that landlord experience, you can then use rental income from a, a property. Uh, like if you're buying a quadplex, you could use the rental income for, from the three other units to qualify for that higher dollar amount. Um, if you don't have that landlord experience, then you'll have to hire a landlord in order to qualify for that property. Um, and then so that eats away at your your bottom line. But that is all we got for today. Um, I'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone has questions. And I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful week. Aloha. Aloha. Have a good one.